congratulations, you have made it to the sixth and final video of looking at the lymphatic and immune system. I imagine this has probably been a very long um, and daunting, daunting uh, process. Um, and for that, uh, I apologize, um, but this is all really important information, especially in light of viruses and uh, illnesses that go around, um, such as right now, uh, as this video is being recorded, um, COVID-19. And so this does have very practical implications for us uh, and how we look at and, uh, and why uh, certain measures are put into place. Um, because of how our immune system works and or doesn't work, especially when we've never been exposed to a specific set of antigens before um, and, and how that can very quickly spread through a population. And so um, when we deal with humoral uh, immunity or antibody-mediated uh, immunity, we're dealing with B cells. And, and uh, what we're going to see here is we're going to see the same three uh, stages. We're going to see recognition, we're going to see reaction or attack, and we're going to see remembrance or memory, um, as we did with the T cells, but it's going to look slightly different. And the reason why it's going to look slightly different is because uh, B cells work off of antibodies. And so we've got this uh, we have to now understand what an antibody is because it's the antibody that's going to be tagging the cell for later destruction. Um, and so we're not dealing with a hand-to-hand -hand combat type of, of scenario as we did with, with the cytotoxic T cells. Instead, we're dealing with a missile ship that is 300 miles off the coast, and it's launching with precision the missiles inland to go ahead and, and mark and destroy uh, its targets. And so let's, let's go ahead and begin this and, and look at how this all goes down. Um, again, the first thing that we need to consider here is recognition. All right. And so our B cells, and this is all, these are little B cells that you see here. Our B cells have uh, receptors on their surface and the receptors are a specific shape, meaning that they are specific for a particular shape of antigen. Uh, and so uh, for these B cells, if the antigen binds to the B cell with its complementary receptors, then what will happen is the B cell brings that antigen in, it breaks it down, decomposes it kind of inside of its cell, and it takes a little snippet of that protein and it binds it to the epitope that is on its surface. And it waits. And it waits for a T cell, a helper T cell to come by and bind to the epitope uh, when it will go ahead and confirm that this indeed, that this indeed is an antigen that is pathogenic, not of self, or is a mutant. Now remember that the helper T cell is binding to the MHC2 protein. So we're dealing with the CD4 pathway here. Um, and once there is confirmation that the antigen indeed is not self uh, and or that the antigen is a mutated version of self, the helper T cell will begin to secrete interleukin, uh, specifically interleukin 2. And the reason why that is critical is because uh, interleukin 2 will go ahead and, and this is the process here, um, I'm sorry, interle oh, interleukin-2 and interleukin-4. Um, but this is the process is a little bit different of a view of it. And the reason why that is important is because the interleukin is going to stimulate the cloning of that B cell. So that B cell is now specific for an antigen. And we're going to clone that B cell that is now specific for that antigen. Um, and so we have all of these uh, now cloned versions of this B cell by which some of those cloned B cells will become what we call plasma cells while others will become memory B cells and, and the memory B cells remember the shape of the antigen and so its receptors are specific for that antigen again. 
these plasma cells uh, will begin to float through the lymph into the lymph nodes. And these plasma cells will begin to go through the cardiovascular system, um, and uh, they will begin to release, the plasma cells will begin to release antibodies. Right. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a couple slides, but let's let's look at what an antibody uh, is. So here's here's the basic structure of an antibody. Right. We have four polypeptide chains. Right. We have two long chains. Right. This here is a long chain. Oops. This here is a long chain. This here is a long chain. And we have two short chains, or what we call light chain polypeptides. All right. The long chains, all right, or the heavy chains, are constant. That never changes. And so the green area that you're looking at right here, all right, this is a constant. That is not going to change. All, antibi all antibodies have that in common. All antibodies have the light chain in common as well. But what varies from antibody to antibody is what we call the variable region or the V region. And so this is your basic shape of an antibody. This is your basic organizational structure of an antibody. Uh, and these variable regions are broken down into five classifications. All right, you have immunoglobulin A, IG there stands for immunoglobulin. Right, so IG stands for immunoglobulin. So you have immunoglobulin A, D, E, G, and M. All right, and at any point in time, uh, you have about 10 billion to a trillion different antibodies that are broken down into these five classifications of antibodies. Again, all 10 billion to a trillion antibodies all vary slightly within the V range or that variable component of um, the antibody. All right. So here's kind of what each of these antibodies classes do. All right? So IgM, um, these are your more broad-ranged antibodies. All right? IgMs are your more broad-ranged antibodies. Um, and so it's the first one that is produced. Uh, IgG, all right? immunoglobulin G, um, are your longest-lasting antibodies. We're going to talk about that there in a few seconds. Um, and also the most common, and it's mainly just because it's more common because most of the viruses that we come in contact with, um, their antigens fit into the variable region most effectively of IgG. All right. uh, we find IgA or immunoglobulin A associated with body secretion, so in your saliva. And so you're dealing with more of a bacterial um, immunoglobulin. IgE or immunoglobulin E, um, we find where the cinephils, hence the E, uh, because of parasitic infections. And then uh, immunoglobulin D classifications, we really have no clue. We, we, we know it's there, we know it's structurally different, um, but we just are not sure uh, what, they, what they do. And so the way that these antibodies work uh, is the plasma cells begin to secrete, uh, the plasma cells begin to secrete the antibodies. Right. And when they secrete the antibodies, these antibodies are going around and they're looking for the antigens that they are associated with or looking or associated the, the shape with. Um, keep in mind that uh, the lifespan of an antibody is about four to five days, right? and a typical plasma cell can secrete about 2,000 antibodies per second. Right? So you're dealing with the average lifespan is four to five days. A 
lifespan of an antibody. And a plasma cell can secrete up to about 2,000 antibodies per second, right, per second. And the way that this works is uh, it's a four-step process in which antibodies, um, I tag and identify the antigen on the cells that they're looking to destroy. Um, and so step one is what we identify as being neutralization. I'm going to go back and we'll talk a little bit more about this here in a couple seconds. Step two in this process is what we call complement fixation. Step three, step three in this process is agglutination. That might sound familiar. And step four is precipitation. Now, what happens during each of these steps? Well, during neutralization, uh, the antibodies are going to attack or attach to a part of the antigen uh, that is pathogenic. And so this is where the antibodies actually attach to the cell's antigen that it has identified as being pathogenic. So that's neutralization, right? It's called neutralization because once that antigen is covered up by the antibody, that cell can no longer cause whatever disease or illness it's designed to cause. So you've neutralized the cell at that point in time. That pathogenic cell is no longer pathogenic because the antibodies have neutralized or covered up the antigen. And so once that is done, we can move into step two, which is the complement fixation. Um, and so what happens is uh, that antibody then becomes fixed on the antigen. So that way the cell cannot get rid of the antibody. And the way it does that is by changing its shape. And so the antibody changes its shape to adhere to the antigen. Then, during agglutination, step three, uh, the antibodies begin to stick to other antibodies. And so now, the antibodies are kind of adhering to other antibodies on the long and, or on the heavy and light chains, um, and dragging these pathogenic cells with them. And then precipitation is the phagocytizing of the cells. Um, the other thing that happens, I should say, during, um, during complement fixation is um, because the antibody is changing shape, it distorts the antigen, which weakens the cell and, and makes it vulnerable to apoptosis um, and cytolysis. So in other words, the leaking of the cytoplasm from within the cell. And that happens again during complement fixation. So the antibody changes shape, adheres to the antigen, and it distorts the antigen to the point where it misshapens or weakens the cell membrane. Um, and then the cytoplasm starts leaking. Um, and then during precipitation, everything gets phagocytized and broken down. And of course, your memory B cells, um, upon first exposure, uh, this whole process takes about 10 to 14 days, right? And that's when you're building up the antibody 
uh, levels to be able to attack and fight whatever it is that is in your body, whether it's COVID-19 or the flu or whatever it is. We refer to that as the antibody titer. It takes about 10 to 14 days for that uh, accumulation of antibodies to really be noticeable and be able to do what it is that they're going to do within the body. Um, and this is why it very often takes uh, 14 days to go ahead and for antibi antibiotics to really kick in because you go to the doctors and the doctor says, here's a 14 day supply of antibiotics. Take all 14 days. Don't stop it after 10 days when you're feeling better. Why is that? Because of this. Because it's t it, the, when you take antibiotics for bacterial infections, you're buying the body time to get that antibody titer up. Right? So you're already starting the attack with the antibodies, and then the body's going to have those antibodies now uh, in supply and can take over and continue to fight the infection post-14 days. And so that is why you get 14-day supplies of antibiotics. Right, because and that's why you're, it's stressed to take all 14 days of those antibiotics. And this here is simply a diagram of what happens with a primary response. Again, it takes about 14 days, 10 to 14 days, for there to be enough antibodies, immunoglobulin Gs, to go ahead and really mount an attack. Whereas upon second exposure. By day three, that titer is high enough. And so you're, you're, you're stopping the infection a lot sooner and a lot quicker that way. All right. And again, this is just another look at that. Um, and then what follows here are a series of tables that kind of uh, highlight everything it is that we have been looking at. All right. So this here is the innate... Uh, defense system, right? more of the innate uh, uh, immune system that is summarized for you. Right? Now we're starting to get into the, uh, the acquired or the adaptive immunity right? and the differences between B cells and T cells. Right? And here is a nice little summary table for you as well. And so that brings us to the end of our look at the lymphatic and the immune system. Um, I know you are relieved, but you're not done. Keep reviewing. You have an exam coming up. You do have an exam coming up. So keep reviewing the material. Keep reviewing the information. Keep asking your questions. Okay, that is all very important. Um, and uh, with that said, I'll see you on the flip side.